this is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Mark Turtletaub, uh, director of Puzzle. Um, I want to start with a sort of bigger question uh, before we get into Puzzle specifically, but you're a prolific producer. You've done some of my favorite films in the last several years, Safety Not Guaranteed in particular. Um, how do you decide you want to direct something like this uh, film, and specific, or how do you decide you want to direct something period or question mark and then after that what was it about this film that you wanted to direct it yeah that's a great question spencer so you know for me it starts on the page uh and in my i don't know 15 or so years of producing i've read maybe eight or ten screenplays that were just extraordinary and most of those come with a director attached uh, and so it's rare, even rarer, to find a great screenplay where the director is not attached. Mm. This was sent to me uh, by a friend, uh, and uh, she said, I think you might like it. Uh, and so I got to read it and fell in love immediately with the screenplay. Knew nothing. It's based uh, originally on an Argentinian film from, I think, 2010. Hmm, interesting. And I didn't know anything about yeah, the Argentinian no, yeah. film, and I purposely didn't watch it all the way through uh, working on the script, through casting, through shooting, through editing, through putting in the music. Finally, when it was finished, I said, okay, now I'll watch the original oh, film. So it was really what was on the page. Uh, and I had been looking to direct something. Uh, and so finding this material and it's uh, it's rare to find something that well written about a woman of a certain age uh, sort of coming of age uh, and has humor and has heart and so I immediately said I'm, I'm in so the story revolves around a woman um, as you said of a certain age who finds uh, there's a housewife but she finds an outlet in I mean, puzzling and specifically sort of competitive right. puzzling. Um, as you approach a film like this, how do you sort of handle the idea of puzzling? Like, it, it could be anything really, but I'm more asking about like the idea of something that's not widespread knowledge. Like you're trying to introduce people to a new concept. How do you sort of approach handling this new idea while also sort of telling the story? Because you don't want to just be like, pause the minute for five minutes, here's what competitive puzzling is, and sort of like go from there. Yeah. Well, for me, when I read the screenplay, when you see the movie, it's not really about puzzling. It's, it could be almost anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. it's a, a woman finds that she has a facility, an ability to do something, and she follows that a native ability that she didn't even know she had, and because of that, it opens her up to a much bigger world. She goes into Grand Central Station. All of a sudden, from suburban Connecticut, oh, yeah. her vistas expand, <laughs> and she meets new people. And so it's really a movie about a woman uh, finding her authentic self and about the relationships and how that ripples through her family and into the new relationships she has. So yeah. for me, it was to, uh, to really focus on the, uh, on the human uh, aspects of the story. Absolutely. And it's a great point you bring up because the core of the story is Kelly McDonald's character. Right. How challenging was it to find that actress? Like, did you always have Kelly McDonald in your head? I mean, she's phenomenal, so right. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you did, but was it was it really a challenge? Because this, this part is so intricate to the proverbial puzzle of the movie. Right. Um, but how, how challenging was it to find the right person to sort of capture? It wasn't that? hard. I was just really fortunate. Uh, and a director's job is made easy by great actors. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, fell in love with Kelly as an actress uh, with a little movie that was, I think it made for TV, called Girl in the Cafe. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, got to see her, of course, back in train spotting, but I didn't really remember that. Yeah. And then saw her uh, years later in No Country for old men playing a southern, this Scottish woman <laughs> yeah. playing a, you know, a southern, yeah. uh, you know, a southern woman from Texas, and then, uh, and then uh, Boardwalk Empire, and I started to connect the dots between those very different roles, and realized what an incredible talent she was. So, I immediately thought of Kelly, uh, and she read the screenplay, f loved it, and so it was very easy for me. One of the other things that sort of popped to me with this um, film is sort of the handling of the secondary characters I thought was sort of very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the son, the husband, Irfan Khan uh, was also very interesting. But how do you sort of approach these characters 
that otherwise or very easily could have been very two-dimensional and sort of make them complex and you know flawed in their own ways like they're not the the hero savior or you know this kid isn't just the screw up or whatever like right. how do you sort of handle that and give them dimensionality in a film like this because it feels like it'd be very easy to make them cliches that's a great question yeah for me uh it's it's in the page to start off with it's got to be in the writing uh it's then in the casting you get uh, actors who can give you a nuanced performance and with david denman irfan khan kelly mcdonald and the the actors that play the children they're they're all talented talented actors so that's the second piece and then you work at creating real people not stick figures i'm not interested in uh in people that have a role if you will people are complex and so uh that comes in every aspect in the way it's performed in the way you cut it uh but in particular i think of someone like david denman uh, who plays the father could have been very easy to be a heavy. Oh, yeah. And yet the way I think about it and the way David and I talked about it before uh, he started to, uh, came into the movie is he's a guy who's tr who grew up in a very small world. Uh, we get hints about what his father was like. We get, you know, we see his world is his, his buddies, his cronies, his, you know, this little world of Bridgeport, Connecticut, working class Bridgeport. And so he doesn't know any different. Uh, and once we start to look at it that way, instead of thinking he's a bad guy or he's a good guy, mm -hmm. then the performance can become nuanced. Uh, this sort of raises a great question and one that I always sort of think of. When you're creating these sort of backstories that aren't necessarily on, on the camera, and in particular in the case of Kelly McDonald's character, a lot of her sort of experience is told through physicality mm. through like looks and mm. I mean she's a very quiet character in general right. so how do you how do you go about knowing when enough is enough is that is that just from the editing or is like if I mean because a lot of stuff probably wasn't necessarily on the page it's like she looks around Grand Central Station or something like right. that like that isn't like I mean exactly declarative of what is going to occur how, how do you know sort of like okay I've captured this. Is it is it in your mind that you've plotted out beforehand? How does that sort of work? Because you did an excellent job of sort of communicating that silent mm. experience, but it feels like, you know, it's not necessarily clear what that would be. Yeah, it's a really it's a good question because you don't really know. And that's part of one of the magic of making a film. You go in, you shot list with your cinema. First of all, you get a good cinematographer. We I had a great one uh, in Christopher Noor. Uh, and we had an alignment early on when we described films that we liked that we could envision how this might look, how we would shoot it, where we, you know, frames within frames or close-ups and how we might, uh, how we might light it. Uh, so there was a lot of conversation around that. But then what happens is you get on the set and you capture enough information, if you will, enough variety in performance that when you get into the editing room, you say, wow, I don't have enough uh, of the chemistry between Irfan and Kelly. And so then you start going through and you do a pass, if you will, in your editing on Irfan and Kelly's relationship. And you just focused on that. And that's one of the things we did. And so you have to have captured enough material in the shooting that you have options either where he's looking at her or she's being looked at and she senses his being looked mm -hmm. at, uh, or you have two shots as well as singles. And so it's about uh, anticipating that you're not going to know everything until you cut the film together. And so get uh, lots of options. So as, as part of that, just sort of having what's on the page and like, you know, I, mean, I guess I think of it sort of when they talk about doing movies with improvisers, where they're like, okay, let's get what's on the page, and then we're just going to do some other shit and see right. what we get from it. Right. Is there sort of a little bit of that where you're just like, okay, let's, let's get some of that background sort of elemental relationship stuff that we might need, but we don't know if we need? Yeah, I don't think it was some, I, we do some of that. That's more uh, interstitial stuff. That's mm -hmm. more like the train shots you'll see in the movie where we're shooting out the back of the train or we're getting a profile of her looking out the front of the train. Some of that material is sort of bonus material. But no, I was talking more about getting varieties of performance. 
and okay. so that you will get okay let's play it a little smaller let's play it a little bigger gotcha, gotcha. let's play it, and then let's capture it in a in a in a from the side and let's capture it from behind so you just it's getting varieties of the way in which you, you it's performed uh, that you can then get in the editing room and put together so I know you directed another film was it five years ago I can't remember um, after that experience were there any sort of changes to your approach or lessons learned or whatever that you decided to take into this film that you're like, okay, if I had to do that over again, I absolutely wouldn't have done. Like, what, what, what was sort of the end to learn uh, result from that previous work? Yeah, that's a great question. I, uh, yes, I could go on and on about what I learned. Uh, the first film I did was a farce, and it was very broad. And it's not really, I think, where I live, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the movies we produced. Sure. Uh, and so with this film, in the selection of the film, I wanted to make sure it was very grounded. And so that's the one thing I learned about sort of where I live as mm -hmm. a filmmaker. Uh, and to be consistent with it. So that's one thing. The other thing I learned, the other big thing, Spencer, was how to uh, take input from a whole variety of people uh, and, uh, and yet not lose your vision and not lose your North Star of, okay, that's, this film is about this and it will, be, it will look this way and it will end up this way. Not lose that, mm -hmm. but still be open enough to be able to listen to a bright cinematographer or a script supervisor or an editor so that you go, no, 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 oh, that one, that's a good idea. Uh, and so that's something that I think over the last few years I've learned, which was how to stay open and yet not give up your vision. Interesting. Um, carrying on sort of that same theme, I mean, this film is obviously a very small, dramatic, emotional film. What was the most challenging part of this, or what was the most surprisingly challenging thing? Because I, I mean, I mentioned before, you know, a lot of it's done through physicality. Right. But for you, what was the thing that you walked in, mm -hmm. you're like, Wow, this was way harder than I anticipated on this movie. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna think I'm being uh, I'm being too glib, but it was really an easy movie to make. Uh, I had great actors. <laughs> that's, that's an awesome situation. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, it doesn't always happen. I was trust saying, me. Yeah, enjoy trust it while me. you can, because I, 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 I suspect that's probably like right, once in a lifetime. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. It doesn't always happen. Uh, in 30 days of shooting, we had not one argument on this on the set. Wow. We had a really smooth set, uh, which is doesn't sound like it. It's a big deal, but if you realize the pressure you're under shooting 12 or 14 hours. Is that concerning? Like, just, I mean, from the, the prospect of, like, you've worked in film for so long now, and you've gone through, you know, a million different sets. To go through one that's, like, working so well, you're like, yeah. okay, everything is going too well. Is is that, like, a sign that I should be alarmed? Like, shouldn't there be something that, like... I don't think so. I think I've gotten to a point in my life where I don't need all the drama. Oh, well, all the better. Yeah, I don't too. need all the drama. Uh, so, for me, uh, it was easy in the shooting uh, and I think that's because we had a good alignment in terms of picking the crew and I had a great crew and a great cast and so it, that's all in spending the time beforehand to say okay who's my who's the right first AD to work with me who's the right cinematographer do we have the same vision uh, so there's that uh, I think in terms of the most challenging portion of the movie was finding the right way to end the movie great point yeah. Uh, we we experimented. I actually shot two different endings, huh. uh, and uh, I'm going to not talk about them because I'll let you uh, let people uh, let yeah, people I let people uh, see the one we chose. But uh, it was in just finding the right way to convey a sense that her journey, the central character's journey, was uh, had ended at just the right place. So this, this raises a great issue, and I, I don't want, like, we don't want to spoil it, but I want to sort of talk about the concept of, like, you did not make this just a cliché narrative of, like, hey, everything's just a pretty bow at the end. How, I mean, you've worked in independent film for a while now. Is that something that you look at as, like, you know, we're going to find the market for this type of film, and it's going to find its serve life or whatever. How do you sort of approach that? Because, you know, it's not just like, you know, your summer movie that's got, like, all your favorite actors blowing up, and then there's a love story, and everyone ends happy. Like, it, it is, it, it takes a little bit more time, maybe, to find that, yeah. that, that market. What is your sort of thought process as you Go on, film. Are you just inspired by the work and then figure that out later, or do you have a vision of that all the way through? Or 
Yeah, I think we have both. I think uh, we follow our hearts. When I say we, my producing partner, Peter and I, uh, and the folks that work in our company, we follow our hearts and our instincts. People that join our company, uh, whether it's in TV or film, know the kind of movies we make. Mm. Uh, so that sort of helps us uh, start to narrow the choices of what we might make. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you can't, uh, you can't be oblivious to the commercial aspects of it. Uh, we don't make big blockbusters. Uh, we make movies that hopefully inspire, entertain, touch people's hearts. I mean, we're going to make a big, with that said, we're going to make a, a big movie this year, later in the year, with Tom Hanks and playing <laughs> Fred Rogers. Uh, oh, good timing with the documentary. Yeah, it is good, and yeah, that's a great documentary. But, you know, uh, but most of our movies are small, uh, independent movies. Uh, and so, yeah, that's where we live as filmmakers. Uh, but you have to consider the economics and as best you can. It's, there is, it's not a science, and so you have to get a feel for it, and that comes in the size of the budget, it comes in the casting, it comes in all the choices you make along the way. Is that challenging as both a sort of business guy and an artist? It feels yeah, like that is a, yeah, like a clash. It's a, real, it's a real challenge, and it's, it just, uh, it, 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 uh, it's a balancing act. Very cool. It's a balancing act. So the film is Puzzle. It's wonderful. It's played here at SIF. Comes out fall? July 27th. July 27th. Tell Perfect. if people like it, please spread the word. Because these little movies, you know, they're so hard. To, you know, we don't have multi-million dollar ad budgets. And I think that the world needs more little movies like this. So I definitely encourage people to check it out. Thanks. Mark, thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck with Thanks, this. Thanks, Spencer. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.